Big week on the WTA and ATP this week, and a lot of players getting career high rankings after some shock results on both the ATP and WTA. Let's start with the past results, because in the five tournaments we had, we had a lot of new first time champions. Starting with the WTA and the Lintz Open, Potapova taking out Mardic in the final, 6-3-6-1. Very easy final for Potapova in the end. She got a career high ranking because of it. Over in the Abu Dhabi Open, Belinda Bencic saving three championship points to take the win over Samsonova, 1-6-7-6-6-4. She also added to her total this week in the race of the finals, very, very high up in the race. Heading over to the men's side of things and Baez at the Cordoba Open. He beat Correa 6-1-3-6-6-3 to lift the trophy at home. Over in Dallas, one of the craziest finals you'll ever see, Wu taking out Isna in three tie breaks 6-7-7-6-7-6 and it was 14-12 in the final set tie break which Wu eventually prevailed so it was a crazy tie break to finish that match. And over in France, in Montpellier, Open Sud de France, Sinner wins another title on indoor hardcourt 7-6-6-3 beating Crest in that final so some very interesting results all around and some epic matches from both the men and the women's tournaments let's start with the players that have gone up in the rankings this week on the atp and wta and a career high ranking for samson over up four spots to number 15 in the world after making the final of Abu Dhabi. Potapova goes up 13 spots to a career high 31 in the world after winning the title in Linz. And Wu, he's gone up 21 spots to 76 in the world for winning his first title and a career high for him as well. So three players getting career high rankings. Some of the players that have gone down in the rankings this week, Contivate down nine spots to 27 in the world and her ranking will continue to fall as she won't be playing next week at a tournament that she earned a lot of points at last year. Brooksby also dropped down seven spots to number 43 in the world. And Lehechka. After a very good Australian summer, he's dropped down 16 spots to 53 in the world outside the top 50 despite having a very good January. So a few big names dropping down and a few new names going up in the rankings. Let's start with the WTA rankings this week and not too many changes to the top 10 with Fiontech staying at number one with Sabalenka at two, Jabur at three, Pagula at four, Garcia at five. Those players are all within 500 points and remember Jabur isn't playing for the next couple of weeks so there's a chance we could get some changes to that middle section. Goff is still at six with Zachary at seven, Kazakina at eight, Bencic staying at number nine even though she added a lot of points to her total and Rabakina stays in at number 10. So no changes but the points have changed because there was a lot of players playing down the bottom half of the top 10 that added to their totals. Having a look at the race of the finals now for the WTA, and we do have some changes, but not at the top. Sabalenka stays at number one with Rabakina at number two, but Belinda Bencic, she goes up to number three, three spots higher than last week after adding to her title with the Abu Dhabi Trophy, pushing Azarenka down to number four, Lynette down to number five, and Pagula goes down to number six. Garcia at seven, Zhu goes in at number eight, and we have a change on the bottom with Coco Goff falling out of the top 10, making way for Vekic going up to number 9, and Ostapenko going up to 10, rounding up the top 10 for this week, but very interesting. We're starting to see a little bit of a shape to the WTA Finals race after about a month and a half. Jumping over to the ATP rankings this week, and no real big changes with Djokovic staying at number 1, Elkaraz at number 2 with Pass at number 3, Rude still at number 4 with Rublev at 5, Rafa just behind him at number 6, but we do have a change in the middle with Fritz going up 1 spot to number 7, pushing FAA down to number 8, and that's a career high ranking for Taylor Fritz at number seven after making the semifinals of Dallas. And he is playing this week as well. So he might be able to move a little closer to Rafa there. Runa comes in at number nine and her catch rounds out the top 10 for this week. Taking a look at the race of the finals now and a couple of changes here. Nothing up the top though, because Djokovic still at number one with Pass at number two. Thanks to those Australian Open finals points. Hashinov comes in at three with Paul at four, Shelton at five, quarter at six, but Fritz, he goes up to number seven, two spots higher than last week after that Dallas semifinal. And Yannick Sinner goes up to number eight after winning in Montpellier, 15 spots higher than last week. So he has rocketed into that top eight, pushing Lehechka down two spots to number nine. Nori goes down two spots to number 10. And Andre Rublev is out of the top 10 completely after not playing this week. So some changes down the bottom there. And look at that, four Americans in the top 10 for the race of the finals. It is absolutely crazy. Let's see if they continue because, of course, it's only early in the season. And I'm sure a lot of the names we're seeing right now are not going to be factors three to six months from now. So there you have it. A big week for the rankings and a big week for players low in the rankings as well. Big names, you know, not really playing this week. They are playing next week, though. Doha, we've got a massive field in Doha and in Rotterdam as well. And we have the return of Alcaraz, which I think is going to be very interesting for the rankings. It's going to shake things up a little bit. Of course, while he wasn't playing in Australia... He lost his ranking. He lost his world number one ranking. So he's back in action. Let me know down in the comments below. 
What's been the biggest shock for you this week, rankings-wise? Is it the fact that some of the players maybe that we're used to seeing in the race of the finals aren't quite in the finals yet because they obviously haven't played that much or they haven't got points to get them in that finals race? Or is it the fact that we're seeing so many new players winning titles and getting good rankings? Like Wu, for example, coming out of nowhere to win Dallas and he beat some really good players along the way as well. Let me know down in the comments below what's been the biggest shock for you in the rankings this week.